Good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all Denarians on the go and in the know. Like, subscribe, and share with your fellow Denarian friends. To help support our channel we now accept tips using the blockchain-based Brave Browser NBAV tokens. It makes a huge difference and is very much appreciated. To those of you that made a contribution, I thank you. If you are interested in using the latest technology, the blockchain-based Secure Brave Browser, the link is in the description below. You can be earning cryptocurrency as you surf the internet as you normally do. Ad blockers are in place to prevent all those unwanted bothersome ads as well as your internet speed will increase significantly. I highly recommend it, as it is the only browser I will use on my desktop and my phone. It was made by the same programmer that made the Firefox browser and is super secure and as I stated earlier, based on the new blockchain technology of today. First article of interest for today, International Monetary Fund. Arab Gulf states may find themselves bankrupt after 15 years. A pessimistic report prepared by the International Monetary Fund saw that the Arab Gulf states may find their financial wealth drained after 15 years, if they do not intensify their financial reforms. The International Monetary Fund attributed the pessimistic conclusion to declining oil and gas revenues. It is noteworthy that the oil production of the six Gulf Cooperation Council countries represents more than one-fifth of the global supply, with an estimated net financial wealth of $2 trillion. The economies of the Gulf states were also severely affected by the decline in oil prices in 2014 and 2015. In its report, the International Monetary Fund believes that although the drop in crude oil prices has put pressure on governments to obtain non-oil revenues, in addition to financial reforms, the impact of lower oil and gas revenues has not been fully compensated. In its report, the International Monetary Fund concluded that, in the current financial situation, the current financial wealth in the region can be drained over the next 15 years. This Washington-based World Bank also felt that global oil demand could peak by 2040 or much earlier if there is a stronger regulatory push to protect the environment and energy efficiency. Next article of interest. IMF Director Steps Down, Paving Way for Trump Appointee One of the most senior figures at the International Monetary Fund is stepping down in a move that will allow the Trump administration to influence who will take over as second-in-command at the financial watchdog. David Lipton, 66, will step down as first deputy managing director after a nine-year tenure that made him the longest-serving official to hold what is effectively the number two position. When he leaves at the end of this month he will be joined by Carla Grasso, Chief Administrative Officer and one of three Deputy Managing Directors appointed in 2015. The moves will allow the IMF's Managing Director Kristalina Georgieva to stamp her mark on the organization four months after she took on the top job. It is understood she wants to raise the profile of the departmental directors who are the key people who will implement her policy on the ground. However, according to precedent, the first deputy managing director of the IMF has traditionally been an American national, offsetting the fact that Europeans have always held the top job of the Washington-based multilateral lender. Next article of interest. U.S. Federal Reserve exploring debts and a potential CBDC, confirms Governor. Federal Reserve Governor Leo Brainerd has revealed that the central bank is conducting research on distributed ledger technology. DLT, and its potential for a central bank digital currency, CBDC. Speaking at a symposium on the future of payments in California this week, Brainerd discussed at length the ongoing digital transformation of payments. She emphasized that digitalization has the potential to deliver greater value and convenience at lower cost. Speaking of digital currencies, particularly CBDCs, Brainerd noted the efforts by other central banks in this area, and said, Given the dollar's important role, it is essential that we remain on the frontier of research and policy development regarding CBDC. Like other central banks, we are conducting research and experimentation related to distributed ledger technologies and their potential use case for digital currencies, 
including the potential for a CBDC. This is an important and rather surprising comment from Brainerd who had dismissed the speculations of the Fed launching its own digital currency in 2018. She said at the time that, there is no compelling demonstrated need for a Fed-issued digital currency, Coindesk reported. The softening of the Fed's stance towards CBDC could be due to social media giant Facebook's Libra announcement made last summer. Brainerd admitted that Facebook's digital currency brings up the debate over what form money can take, who or what can issue it, and how payments can be recorded and settled. That said, she emphasized that the central bank needs to take into account a number of considerations related to financial stability, security and more in relation to CBDC issuance. Last month, six central banks, including the Bank of Japan, the Bank of England, the Bank of Canada, the Rics Bank, the Swiss National Bank, and European Central Bank, ECB, have formed a working group with the Bank for International Settlements to collaborate and share their CBDC research. The group will reportedly hold their first meeting in April. The Fed has not joined the group yet, but Brainerd said that they are working with other central banks as they learn more about central bank digital currencies. Also last month, J. Christopher Jane Carlo former chair of the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, CFDC, along with Charles Jane Carlo and Daniel Gore Fine, partnered with Accenture for the Digital Dollar Project, a new initiative to push for a United States CBDC. Next article of interest. Could blockchain technology prevent the next financial crisis? A central bank's role is to manage a nation's currency, money supply and interest rates. The United States did not have a central bank until 1913, when Woodrow Wilson signed the Federal Reserve Act into law. Since then, the Federal Reserve has been accountable for the elasticity of the U.S. economy through the expansion and contraction of liquidity in the form of credit and new fiat money supply. Retail and institutional banks abide by the Fed's stringent economic rules, which in turn trickle down to affect the daily lives of entrepreneurs, corporations, investors, markets and the consumer. Today, the U.S. and most first world economies are in the precarious position of tightening liquidity as a direct result of overstimulation. It has become commonplace to read about instability in the overnight repo markets and leading to the new form of quantitative easing. These are signs that the current financial system is starting to break down again, but unlike 2007, there is an entirely new industry built around the security, liquidity and stability of our money. Defining the Landscape, Market Repurchase Agreement Operations, also known as repo markets, have made national major media headlines over the last few months, including from Bloomberg, Financial Times, Business Insider, just to name a few among the dozens. But what exactly are repo markets? In short, Repo lending is a way for the Fed to expand credit within the banking system. Repo interest rates are the interest rates that banks charge each other for borrowing cash. Typically, they follow the Fed's overnight lending rates. However, we have started to see repo rates spike upward, pointing to an indication of supply issues from banks issuing short-term cash to other banks and an increasing demand from banks and corporations that need short-term cash. In 2007, we saw firsthand that when liquidity dries up, banks fail, markets fall, unemployment grows and economic output contracts. Since then, the Fed has been filling the banking liquidity gap by printing dollars under the name of quantitative easing. After 10 years of providing the markets with easy money, the Fed reversed course in 2018, raising interest rates and selling bonds to clean up their balance sheet. Cutting off the supply of free money combined with raising rates has sent banks scrambling for liquidity, thus jolting the market several times over the last 12 months. In June, the Fed changed course yet again, ending balance sheet cuts and decreasing interest rates. In September, we got our first glimpse into the consequences of overstimulating the money supply for 10 years then trying to get back to normalization. Although we couldn't see which banks were the culprits, Several banks showed their cards as the interbank lending rates rose well above the Fed's set interest rates. In an economy that was backed by free money and debt, 
a shortage of credit in dollars can quickly escalate into a serious problem. With interest rates already near zero, it is difficult to see what tools the Fed will use when things become dire. The introduction of Bitcoin, for many early crypto enthusiasts, Bitcoin, BTC, offered a new type of money detached from the existing dysfunctional system. Bitcoin arrived 10 years ago in 2009 and presented itself as a new, asymmetric, uncorrelated asset class that was an alternative to mainstream finance. Its value was derived from a global network of distributed contributors collaborating through the mining of new coins while simultaneously securing the network. Throughout the 2010s, the ecosystem evolved beyond just the individual sovereign ownership of money and into the introduction of programmatic intermediaries like smart contracts, which further removed unnecessary human intervention. Bitcoin and Ethereum and the new technologies they brought to life have demonstrated the beginnings of what international cooperation can look like if we remove superfluous centralized layers in our economic systems that add friction and are quickly proving to be functionally obsolete. There is a necessary balance to strike as we transfer from the flawed financial system of today to the more technological, decentralized system underpinned by blockchain. We've experienced the flaws of peer centralization via quantitative easing, but to make the assumption that peer decentralization would provide a utopian solution for global finance is a fallacy. Decentralized technologies provide tools to reduce costs and add efficiencies where existing technologies cannot, but there are elements of the existing system including people, corporations and governments that are essential to making the new system work. A global liquidity solution, Bitcoin has led to an entire group of blockchains, including the XRP Ledger, Ethereum, EOS, Tezos, Cardano and others, each with their own specific use cases and governance. One thing that is common between them is an infrastructure for new financial tools to be built around payments, lending, stabilized currencies, tokenization and decentralized exchanges. To blockchains in particular, Ethereum and the XRP Ledger have applications being built on top of them that provide tools to lessen the impacts of another global financial crisis. Ethereum could be best defined as a worldwide computer that is formed by an infinite number of computers talking to each other. It offers the advantage of global applications, running exactly how they were programmed and without the risk of tampering by individuals, governments or financial institutions. In an era of endless fiat printing, establishing a reliable, stable currency that people can use in everyday commerce will become pivotal as we begin to witness the effects created by central banks. One project being built on top of Ethereum that is focusing on currency stabilization is the creator of the DAI stable coin, DAI, MakerDAO, a type of decentralized autonomous organization managed solely by smart contracts and code rather than human managers. The concept of DAI is fairly straightforward, it's a token like Bitcoin and Ether. However, it's designed to have little to no volatility. To start, DAI is trying to be stable relative to the US dollar, a big step in the digital world, as most cryptocurrencies are volatile. This paves the way for consumers around the world to transact without concerns of fluctuating value in their currency. Over time, DAI and other stable coins can diversify in order to hedge against falling fiat currencies and start to peg themselves to fixed assets like gold or other commodities. Creating a stable currency today is already important in places like Argentina, where the national currency depreciated 51% against the US dollar in 2018 alone. When these same effects hit currencies like the US dollar, having a stable consumer currency will become instrumental. In order for digital consumer currencies to work, banks need to transition their infrastructure in order to accommodate this new ecosystem. This will not happen overnight and there will have to be a transition period between the current system and the new one being developed. An example of a company upgrading an entire industry for the benefit of businesses and consumers and positioning themselves perfectly to fill the coming liquidity crisis is Ripple. True to its slogan, instantly move money to all corners of the world, Ripple is a real-time gross settlement system, 
Currency Exchange and Remittance Network. There are many inefficiencies in cross-border transactions between banks today. Slow transactions and high fees are a direct result of the fragmentation that exists between disparate entities. Try to wire a friend or family member money abroad, and you will quickly witness firsthand the frustrations with this outdated technology. It's important to note that the company Ripple is different from the cryptocurrency XRP, the digital asset on the XRP ledger. The digital asset and the ledger were formed before the company but do share common founders. Although the company uses XRP for liquidity purposes, they do not control the currency or ledger. Ripple sells Ripple in it, an enterprise solution for banks and institutions around the world. Ripple Init consolidates the existing community of banks into a single network that provides real-time, liquid and low-cost transactions. Ripple Init is a payments network based on blockchain technology, with over 200 banks and payment providers worldwide and consisting of three main products, Zgurrent, on-demand liquidity, formerly Zrapid, and Zva, each serving a specific role. Zva provides one method for banks and corporations to send out global payments instantly, while Zcurrent provides an instantaneous settlement layer between these banks. On-demand liquidity provides the liquid layer between institutions so they can reduce the paper currency they are required to keep on hand. More on this shortly. The repo markets show the first signs of a liquidity shortage in 2007. As we once again see these signs resurfacing, on-demand liquidity could be the solution we didn't have in the late 2000s. How does on-demand liquidity work? Basel III changed the regulatory landscape of how Tier 1 capital ratio is calculated. Before the 2007 crisis, regulators could trust that banks had enough liquidity to remain solvent. However, following the financial crisis and failure of several banks like Lehman, that ceased to be the case. The new regulations mandated banks to hold pre-funded accounts, or existing pools of liquidity, to move paper currencies between banks in disparate countries. For example, Bank X in the US and Bank Y in Mexico must now hold a percentage of their deposits in either US dollars or Mexican pesos in order to move currencies between one another. This requirement ties up billions of dollars in working capital and is an inefficient solution to ensure liquidity. Zcurrent puts a temporary blockchain between Bank X and Bank Y when Bank Y wants to receive US dollars from Bank X, rather than Bank X having to hold those dollars on reserve at Bank Y to ensure proper liquidity, they can sell dollars for XRP. The XRP can be sent to Bank Y, who can then sell it in exchange for US dollars. Both banks can maintain full control of their reserves, bringing that working capital back to their individual institution. As we watch for more signs of a global liquidity shortfall, companies like Ripple will be worth keeping a close eye on. The current system is showing its age, but this time, we have new tools to help us avoid the pitfalls of the last crisis while providing the infrastructure for a productive and healthy financial future. Hit the like and subscribe button to be alerted as more articles of interest are posted. Be sure to visit my Denarian blog. Also check out my Facebook or Twitter for all of today's articles of interest as I post them on those platforms as well. Pick up your free trial copy of the newly upgraded Currency Exchange Planner before you leave. Use the promo code, the Denarian, and get 25% off at checkout when you decide to unleash the full planner's abilities along with the mobile application added free for being my subscriber. Also be sure and register today as an affiliate with the Gold Savings Carrot Bar program. If you do not keep your savings in a real asset like gold, you risk everything as the fiat system fails and they boot up the new quantum financial system on the blockchain. Protect your family's wealth today in physical gold, as tomorrow may be too late. The program is made so everyone can afford to save in gold, by offering it one gram at a time. Start saving in a real true asset like gold, it's free to register and secure your family's savings tomorrow. Why do you think all the central banks are loading up on gold lately, and running from the current depreciating fiat US dollar? Do you think they do not know what is coming? Get yourself protected today.
Both of the links to these invaluable programs are available in the description box below this video. Go check them out. Knowledge is power. Using that newfound knowledge is powerful. Over and out, for now, the Dinarian.